But you throw some sin issues on him. And you give him a bag. You give him a bag to carry. And he's trying to carry all this weight by himself. And he's trying to get from one point to the next point. But the reality of it is until he begins to drop some bags and he begins to get back to who God has called him to be and he begins to realize that there is a purpose and a plan for his life and he realizes that, listen, there is too much in me. There's too much that God has for me that I refuse to carry the bags any longer. First Samuel, the 10th chapter in verse 20, I'm going to read a couple of verses here to get us started. And it says this, it says, Samuel brought each tribe one after the other to the altar and the Lord chose the Benjamin tribe. And next Samuel brought each clan of Benjamin there and the Lord chose the Matra clan. Finally, the finally Saul, the son of Kish was chosen. But when they looked for him, he was nowhere to be found. The people prayed, our Lord, is Saul even here? Yes, the Lord answered, he is hiding behind the baggage. He is hiding behind the baggage. As I mentioned, I want to just title the sermon in a question form for all of us today. Are you hiding behind the baggage. All of the people of Israel were gathered together and this was an important occasion. The people of Israel, they've been suffering. They were frustrated. They needed help. They needed a king and they demanded that God set a king over them. And on this day, finally, this king would be chosen among them. Whose tribe would it be from? Whose family? Some, they wondered if they would be the one chosen. But, and so Samuel, the prophet and the priest, he, of God, he, he brings forth the tribes and they, he, he narrows down to the Benjamin tribe. And then, and then he goes a little deeper within the tribes and to the clans within the tribe and he finds the Matra clan. And then, and then he finds the families within the clan and then he finds the Kish family. And then from the family of Kish, he finds the chosen king, a young man named Saul. And the news spread that the king was chosen and they were, the people were ready. They were excited because they finally have a king to lead them, to guide them. And, and Samuel had already anointed Saul as the king in private. Now it was time for him to go public and and he wants to present the king it's a it's a festival it's a it's a it's a atmosphere where they were ready to receive a king and and so everybody's gathered and they begin to say now make welcome your new king from the family of Kish Saul in crickets no one is around finally they go Where is the king that you promised us? Where is the king that was anointed? Where is the king that was chosen? And they begin to pray. They begin to pray. Say, God, where is the king that you promised us that you said you had for us? And the Lord answers as well. He's hiding behind the baggage. When God prepares you and me for promotion, he will always put you in a place where you must deal with with the baggage that you are hiding behind. There's never a time that you're going to step from one season to the next without being faced with baggage in your life. You've got it. I've got it. We've all deal with it. So baggage is something that is significant that you have to address. In his book, Traveling Light, Max Lucado writes this. Odds are you are carrying baggage right now, somewhere between your first step out of bed this morning and your last step out the door. You picked up your overstuffed bags. You stepped over to the baggage carousel and loaded up. You don't remember doing it? That's because you did it without thinking. You don't remember seeing a baggage terminal? That's because the carousel is not the one in the airport. It's the one in your mind. 
It's the bags we grab, and they're not made of leather, but they're made of burdens. No wonder you're tired at the end of every day. You're carrying all the bags, and it's exhausting. So my question is, are you hiding behind the baggage because your future destination depends on your willingness to address the baggage that you are hiding behind? Do I have anybody's attention so far? A couple of years ago, before the pandemic, I, I had a ministry opportunity in Chicago, and I decided to take Kaylee. It was before that that I took Hannah. I had to officiate a, a wedding ceremony in, in San Francisco, so I took Hannah with me, and it was a, a young man that grew up in our church. He wanted me to come out there, and so I took Hannah with me. And so I owed Kaylee a, a, a dad daughter trip. So I, I took her with me on this ministry opportunity in Chicago. And so we were, we were coming back, uh, headed to the airport to come back to Dallas. And, and if you've been to Chicago, they got great food. And so I, I had come back with a lot more stuff than I went with. And how many knows that happens on trips? You stop by, you pick up, you souvenirs, you food, you, you know, they have great popcorn in Chicago. It's like cheese and caramel mixed. It's, it's, it's anointed. It's great. I mean, and so I, I load up the popcorn and I, and I begin to just, I was carrying on bags and I, I begin to, um, to, to prepare. And of course, you know, the, the airport was really busy. It was before the pandemic. So everything was moving, everything was shaking. And, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm taking this bag here and it's, it's small enough to carry on. And so when I get there, they, they have me put the bag on the, the scale and they were like, sir, you got too much stuff in your bag. And I was like, well, but you don't understand it's, it's, it's the right size. It says, it's not about size. It's about the weight. And so everybody's coming in, you know, they're passing me up. And then so I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm going through the bags and, and there's people all around me. Kaylee's rolling her eyes because she's embarrassed. So I'm sitting here going, I ain't checking in this bag. So I begin to go looking through my stuff, looking through my looking through all the weight that I may have. And, and I had some water bottles in there and I, I said, well, I can get rid of those, but you know, I ain't, I ain't getting rid of this. So, and I began to just, so there was just mess all over the floor. And I realized that it, I was not going to make it out of that place until I dealt with the weight. And as much as I wanted to talk them into, well, the size is okay. And I'm like, no, no, bro, you don't get it. It ain't nothing to do with the size. Because where you're going to, you can't carry the weight that you're trying to navigate through. So I, I realized until I was willing to deal with the weight of the baggage that I was carrying, I was not going to get to my next destination. Paul writes about it in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. He says this, so then with endurance, he gives us this imagery, this analogy of a race that we're running. He goes, and so with endurance, let us also run the race that is laid out in front of us since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. And then he says this, let us throw off any extra baggage. I'm reading from a different translation, but get rid of the sin that trips us up. The New King James Version says this. It says so easily, it's not bags, but it's the, the snares that so easily ensnares us. If you, if you look up the translation, even from the Greek, if you look up the translation of the Greek word that's, that's, that, that means ensnares, it says this. It's something that is easily avoided. Easily avoided. It means admired. It means ensnaring. It means dangerous. And we all have 
bags and we know we we all have baggage that we're carrying and, and you know we know the the baggage like like we have deceit and we have resentment that maybe could be in our heart or or there's hatred and there's racism that we're carrying that we're trying to figure out how my I grew up in this environment where my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents were racist and I'm trying to run through this baggage issue that I'm trying to deal with what I was raised up around and trying to just shift from that we all have baggage it could be rebellion it could be drugs it could be alcohol it could be addiction it could be money it could be it could be religion it could be lust it, it could be prejudice it could be hate you we all have the potential of having baggage in our life and and there's a there's a list of those things that that you know we've talked about in church but what about the baggage it's like the fear of failure and you think well that's not hurting anybody but it's hurting you and, and you're right there. You're trying to get on the plane for your next destination. And you're trying to figure out why you can't, why you feel like God is not allowing you on the plane to get to the next season of your life. And God's saying, listen, I, I've got to be the TSA agent right now for you and to tell you that you can't move from here to there until you get rid of the weight of the baggage that you're carrying. And then it says this, it may be procrastination. Procrastination is, is baggage. And I, I deal with that type of baggage. My wife, she's right here. If she wasn't here and she wasn't in the service, I'd probably kind of like move past it. But I know I'd be like telling a lie right here in front of you because she know procrastination is a bag that we're, it's baggage that we carry. Our, our self-control, a lack of self-control, our lack of concentration is, is baggage. A negative attitude is baggage. A negative attitude is baggage. It's, it's, it's when you have this, it, it has this negative impact on your life and your relationships. And you're like, well, but I, but I go to church and I love the Lord and I, and I serve and I sing and I do all the things that I'm supposed to do. But you're trying to figure out why you can't get to the next place. It's because you're just trying to say, well, I'm not dealing with that baggage, the top 10 things that people that are not in the church deal with, but there's some other bags that you are dealing with that I'm dealing with that, that I'm dealing with that's keeping us from being everything that God has for our life. It's, it's, it's the baggage of, of rejection, the feeling of rejection. It's, it's the baggage of, of unforgiveness. It's the baggage of jealousy. It's the baggage of greed and pride and pride. I, I heard something about pride the other day that just, I went home and I told Holly, about it. I was like, I heard um, another pastor say this and it just, it shifted me because pride is, is to focus on yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses. See, we think oftentimes that pride that, that, that pride is when we are thinking of our weaknesses and we focus on our weaknesses and we say, well, if I could just do this better, if I was better, you know, because I have a tendency, I'm just being transparent, of being really hard on myself. But what happens is, is that is actually a form of pride when you're so focused on your weaknesses because that just simply just says, I'm trying to do this within my own ability and I'm not putting any, of, any attention or any responsibility on God to help me. Because humility is to focus on who God is and who you are not. And that's baggage. That's baggage that we, that we deal with pride. And we think, well, I'm, no, humility is because I'm holding my head down. I'm just like, oh, if I could just get this right. Well, the thing is, is because you're not putting the focus on the one that's going to make you right. And it's, it's baggage. There's, there's unbelief is baggage. Unbelief is baggage. Although we may claim to believe the Bible too often, we're unwilling to trust in God to provide for our needs. We say it, we sing it, we, we declare it, we, we speak it, we lift our hands when the, when the minister and the worship leader says to do it. But the reality of it is, is we're still dealing with this baggage of unbelief. To where we really don't believe what we're saying and what we're singing about and what we're praying about. And there's got to be this thing. There's got to be some bags that's got to be released off of our life so we can step into believing that what God says is what God is going to do. That you can walk confidently in your future that says, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It's, it's, it's unbelief. It, it could be anger. Anger. Anger that's leading to sin. Is it wrong to anger? No. 
The Bible says, it says the Bible says that you are to be, you can be angry, but just don't sin. Sin not. So God says, it. Oh, you can be angry. You just can't lose your crazy mind when you're angry. And then there's, there's bitterness and there's, there's envy. Envy is simply this. Stress over another's success. You, you're looking at everybody's timeline and it's stressing you out. Because they're just trying to post what they want you to see. You're looking at their Instagram and they're taking pictures that, uh, of this great life that they're living. And it's causing you stress because you're dealing with the baggage of envy. And, and then there's, there's bitterness and it's, it's, it's a poison that is, it's poison in your spirit and there's resentment and Proverbs talks about resentment. It says a stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but the resentment caused by a fool is even heavier. So we realize that resentment is that thing that you didn't sign up for. Resentment is that thing that, that you didn't, you didn't mean, you didn't ask for it. You did the right thing. And they did you wrong and you now deal with resentment in your heart because of it. And you still, it doesn't matter what they did. They deserve to have to stay back and the TSA agent not let them through. But the reality of it is, is you are still in line trying to deal with the weight of what you're carrying and trying to figure out how am I going to get from here to there? Are you hiding behind the baggage? I know it's a little heavy in here, but it's going to get good. There's, there's slander. Slander is, is baggage. Sometimes we can do slanderous things in the name of Jesus. And you're trying to figure out why everybody's getting a victory or everybody's living a, a, a victorious life and you're not. But I pray. I pray every day. I pray every day. But you, but you have a, a tendency of being slanderous to people all in the name of prayer. And, and then there's idolatry, having, having things in your life that you put before God. Having uh, social media that you may be putting before God. Or you, or you have people that you're putting before God, relationships you're putting before God. And we've got this thing where, you know, we're trying to recover from, you know, getting people back to church. And, and we have online church and so thankful for those that are online. And we are grateful that will always be an option for our church. And, and so we celebrate the, the options of having two different campuses. But the reality of it is, is that we have to be careful that we don't allow ourselves to hide behind the baggage of other things. Because if we're not careful, the, the, the healthy pattern that we once had, we will no longer have anymore. And we're trying to figure out why we are still stuck at this season of our life. Everybody good? Will you do me just a favor just so I make me feel better? Just look at your neighbor and say, hey, he's talking to all of us. Don't take it personally. Just don't, don't take it personally. He's talking to all of us. It ain't just you. It ain't just you. If it'll make you feel even better, you can point at me and say, it's him too. It's him too. It's it's that guy up there holding the microphone. It's, it's ensnaring. Ensnaring means it could be this baggage that is easily carried. Baggage that is easily carried. I remember the old school. I had one up here, didn't make it out here, but I remember the old school. I see it back there. I see it back there. I'm going to grab it. So I remember this, this is old school baggage right here. It made you walk like this. Now I can't, I'm trying, trying to strut. It was just like it's that heavy. So this, I, somebody brought this a long time ago and I was like, I love it. There's something about just some nostalgia. Cause like if this baggage could talk, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I remember the old school way. And some of y'all remember these back where you, I mean, you run through the airport and you're like, like I say, you, by the time you get there, you're like, you're dragging it. And it, it becomes, but then they came out with this. They put some wheels on that bad boy. You're like, you can, you can be on the phone. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, how you doing? What's up? Hey, you stop at Starbucks at the airport, get you a coffee. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You can spin it around. It's like, I'm just that cool. I'm just that cool. And. And so sometimes if we're not careful, baggage can become so easily carried. 
We, we've allowed ourselves for the baggage to become so convenient. We live in a society where baggage is easy to carry. And, and the reality of it is, is that we've got to make sure that even though we like the convenience of the ease, sometimes it's good for us to feel a little bit of sweat when we're carrying stuff. Sometimes it needs to be like the old school where, you know what, when you were dealing with some baggage and you allowed some stuff in your heart through the week and you just like, God, just let me just get to Sunday because you knew that even if I had to stroll in and I had to drag my stuff in, I had to drag my back, I was going to find myself at the old-fashioned altar. I was going to find myself at the altar, and I was going to make sure that, hey, it was it was okay for me to feel a little strain from my baggage. It was okay for me to feel a little bit of sweat because of my baggage, because it had me in a way of, of, of walking the right road when I realized there was a little bit of exhaustion. See, we've allowed baggage to be easy for us. We don't feel the sweat of our baggage anymore. And it's time for the people of God. And I'll honest, be honest with you, I didn't feel that this sermon was going to take this type of spirit behind it, but I think we need to push into it a little bit. It's time for the people of God to feel the sweat of their baggage again. Because, because it's, it's nice to have them nice and shiny, looking good. And you can go to the airport and you can try to match people. With their bags. You see, you see them coming around that whole carousel thing? And I look at people, some guy shopped in a nice suit, you know, got nice shoes on, look like he's wearing an Armani suit. And I was like, that, that Louis Vuitton is going to be his, sure enough. Hey, how you doing? And he takes, and sometimes we are so matched with the shininess of our baggage. But you know what? The reality of it is, is what we see in the natural is the shininess. But you know what? You can find some sharp guys and some sharp women that look like they got it all together. But if you look inside of their spirit, they got some beat up suitcase that they've been carrying around and they're trying to get free from it. And it's okay. We need to feel the sweat of our baggage again. Because it's gotten a little too convenient. Anybody here today? Because this is the thing that we do. Adrian, can you come up here for a second? I'm going to use your illustration. This is what it looks like. You, you, you come here, hold this, throw this over your shoulder. Now, if Adrian's late for the airport, go ahead and, go ahead and move. And he, he may be carrying, he may be carrying. Geez, can it just be simple, bro? Just, just have to put all this theatrics on it. And so, so. He, he may be dealing with some unforgiveness and a little bit of resentment or, or some issues from his childhood. And he can, he, you saw him move again. Move. He can move pretty quick with that. That's fine. But you throw some sin issues on him and you give him a bag You give him a bag to carry, and he's trying to carry all this weight by himself. And he's trying to get from one point to the next point. But the reality of it is, until he begins to drop some bags, and he begins to get back to who God has called him to be, and he begins to realize that there is a purpose and a plan for his life, and he realizes that, listen, there is too much in me, there's too much that God has for me, that I refuse to carry the bags any longer. Are you hiding? Thank you. Are you hiding behind the baggage? Are you hiding behind the baggage? Because it can, it can be an attitude to where it's become convenient for you to carry a critical spirit. It may be convenient that you've carried a baggage of a love of money. To where you're so much like, I'm, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. And, and, you, and you made it all about you grinding that all it's done is become this performance that you've put on yourself. And you, you find this pressure. You find this, this bag that you're carrying around constantly because of your love of success. Now, everybody needs to be successful. Everybody needs to strive and work. 
but I'm talking about the bag that it holds you down and you feel like you're just trying and trying and trying. Sometimes you've got to realize that there's a bag called the grind. And yeah, we need to be successful, but it can't be to the point where you are just trying to make it. The Bible says that my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And so God wants you to live your life free. I, there's a great pastor in the city, a great friend, Pastor Ben Daly. Pastor knows him well. He told me as I was stepping into this position, he got real, we were at breakfast, and he looked at me real serious, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. He said, listen, let me tell you something. He goes, do not get on that treadmill of performance as a pastor. He goes, don't do it. Don't you try to sit there and just get on that door. You're constantly running, constantly running, constantly running, trying to prove yourself, trying to grind, 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 grind. Do what you do, but at the end of the day, you need the grace of God. You need the grace of Jesus to guide you in your life, and you be okay enough that the grace of God is enough. It's the baggage that we're carrying because we, had, we understand that baggage that can be frequently admired, but baggage that, that, that is dangerously or harmfully handled. Because you got to be careful that you don't allow anybody to handle you and your baggage. Because sometimes, this is what I have found out. Have you ever noticed that people that have baggage find people with baggage? It's like baggage breeds baggage. And you think, well, I just need him because he's going to fix it. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I just need him. But if you have baggage, let me tell you, he ain't going to help you with the baggage that he has. And you want somebody to be your, 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 your hero, but the reality of it is, is he's weighted down just as much as you are. And I have seen in my little bit of ministry time that usually with somebody that comes together with baggage and comes in with somebody else with baggage, it usually doesn't work out too well. Unless they have the Lord. Unless they have the Holy Spirit that is helping them and unpacking things. You have to understand that sometimes you don't need anybody handling your bags. Because you, you need to be careful. You need to have the right people that if you have some baggage in your life, your baggage is not for you to tell everybody about. Just because they go to church don't mean they're always going to be trustworthy. airport they go yes where are you flying to i'm flying flying to chicago okay, okay you're back so much thank you so much we appreciate it. god you have a safe flight god, god bless you <laughs> I'm always churchy god bless you and, and you know so go, have a good day and then when they they get behind that curtain they're like <laughs> you just you got to be careful who you allow to handle your baggage. I'll be, I'll be on the airplane. I'll be on the airplane looking out that little window where they're loading your bags. And I'm like, oh, that's my nice shiny blue bag. And he's like, I'm like, you have to be careful of the people that are handling your baggage. You need people that love you enough, that love you in spite of your baggage. Because some people will be so intrigued with your baggage that they're not worried about you. They're just worried about talking about your baggage. You got to make sure that you find the right people. Am I helping anybody today? How people handle your baggage. And then you got to also look at how you handle your baggage. How, how you handle your baggage how are you handling the baggage that you're carrying how, how are you handling the bitterness how, how are you handling the poor self-image that you know is not what God has for you how, how are you how are you dealing with that alarming level of insecurity that you're dealing with it's baggage it doesn't mean you're bad it just means you're stuck at this place and so you have to understand that you have to, to, to know how to handle your bags. I, when Saul was anointed, when Saul was anointed king, he was chosen. He was God's chosen to be king. And, and the Bible says that he, he, he was on a journey looking for his, his father's donkeys. You can read it in the ninth chapter. He's, he's looking for his father's donkeys. They can't find them. 
So they, the guy that was traveling with them says, why don't we go find the prophet? So he goes to the prophet and says, listen, we're looking for my father's donkeys. And, 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 and Samuel says, listen, I ain't here to talk to you about donkeys. I'm here to talk to you about kingdom. And you have to be careful that you don't allow yourself to always be out looking for lost donkeys. God has called you to more than just looking for lost donkeys. Because at the time that he was anointed to be king, the time for him to stand up and to be recognized, he's hiding behind the baggage. Six chapters later, the same prophet Samuel is anointing David as king. He goes on where Saul, jealous, baggage, envy, baggage, trying to kill him, baggage. And the people are crying out. <laughs> Saul has killed his thousands, but David's killed his ten thousands, baggage. He was supposed to be king. He was king, but he never reached his potential because he kept hiding behind the back. I feel like the Holy Spirit is doing something in your heart right now. Online, everybody in the room. And I'm just going to pause and let the Holy Spirit just do something. Shut your eyes for a moment. Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in this place. I thank you, Jesus, and I, I know you're, you're going in a different direction. But God, I thank you that you're touching somebody in this place. And there's people here that they've been dealing with some baggage and they have been harmfully and dangerously dealing with it. And they're missing out on what you have for them because they've been hiding behind it. And I declare for this church, and it's not the building, it's the people. I declare for the people in this room that there is about to be freedom that's going to hit their life in this room today. Because, God, I thank you that you're going to begin to shift some things. And I, I speak to every person, every husband, every wife, man, woman, every teenager in this room. Ah, teenagers, let me tell you, if you're under the age of 20, let me talk to you. You're at a great place right now. To be aware, listen, if you could just listen to me for just a moment, if you can just be aware of the baggage that the enemy is wanting to pack on you, if you can be aware of it now, I promise you, you will be so thankful when you're 30. You'll be so grateful when you're 40. You'll be so you'll be giving God all the praise when you're 50 because you didn't have to try to wait until you were my age or some of our ages to figure out how I can get this thing off of me. You can connect to different seasons of your life without there being any problem. I speak freedom in this house right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that 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 this church and these people will not pay the cost of the baggage. When I was trying to get back from Dallas, from Chicago, if I was just willing to pay the price just to check in the bags, let somebody else carry it. I was so focused on trying to carry it myself. And you just have to pay the cost. What is the cost? Guess what? It's a cost you don't even have to even pay for because Jesus paid the cost. And you're carrying around something and Jesus is, is like that, that agent and he wants to take it from you. He says, listen, don't even worry about the weight anymore. You're trying to do it by yourself. And Jesus, how many times do I have to die for you to not carry the baggage? How many times? Wasn't one time enough for you to be free from the baggage that you're carrying? With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just kind of landed this thing a little quicker, but I feel like the Spirit of God wants to do something in some hearts today. 
if that's you, I want you to lift your hand if you're dealing with some baggage. If you're dealing with some stuff that you need to let go, I want you to lift it confidently. I want you to lift it confidently because I'm going to tell you straight up right now, I'm going to have you come down. I'm going to have you come down. So I, I want you to lift it confidently, but with the same confidence that you're lifting your hand, go ahead and just, just position in your mind that I want you to come forth. I want you to step step forward in, in, into this because freedom is here for you today. You don't have to deal with it anymore. There's, there's grandmothers and grandfathers that you've been dealing with this baggage thing from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. You've been dealing with this thing but freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is in this place. Come on, if you're dealing with baggage, I want you to come down right now. And I want you to begin to lift up your hands because you're going to walk out of here free. I speak right now that healing is coming to your life. In the name of Jesus, you can be free today. You can be free today. You don't have to carry it anymore. The baggage of sin, the baggage of frustration, the baggage of not being good enough, the baggage of low self-esteem. I'm here to to tell you today is your day of freedom you can be free if you're at home you can just find an altar right there at your couch or at your office you can find freedom right now in the name of Jesus come on if you come down I want you to lift up your hands and I want you to begin to praise him because I don't know what it is that you're dealing with but freedom is in this place freedom is in this place in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on and lift up your voice and magnify the Lord Break through, break through, oh, come on and lift your voice and magnify the Lord, hallelujah, we praise you. Come on, lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. God, I lay hands on every person here today. I will stay here as long as it takes. But God, freedom is coming over my sister right now in the name of Jesus. I declare right now that the stuff that some people have been carrying for years, for years, I speak freedom. I speak freedom. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's okay. Be free, be free, yeah. He's got so much for your life. So be free, be free. The Lord want me to tell you that it doesn't matter anymore. Just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. In the name of Jesus, for my brother right now, I lay hands on him and I release purpose out of his life let it come forth I, I see that bags and baggage it's like it's dissolving right now in the name of Jesus so father I thank you right now that the purpose and the plan you have for this young man that is coming forth right now in the name of Jesus 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 father we thank you right now for my sin let her be free right now in the name of Jesus it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. Stop carrying it. Stop carrying it. Stop carrying it. Oh, stop carrying it. You can't carry it any longer. In the name of Jesus. Right now, right now. Oh. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. You're just one. Oh. Hallelujah, Father. Father, right now. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Be free. It doesn't matter anymore. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Be free. 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 It's okay. Hey. It's okay. It's okay. Do you understand that God cares for you right now? You can be free. Yes, you can. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just cry. Because God is washing your spirit. He's washing your soul. In the name of Jesus. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus, oh. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Sylvia, come pray for her. Come pray for her. I'm going to have Sylvia pray for you, okay? Just continue right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. God, freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now for freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Father, for my sister, you were one of the first that showed up here. Because you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. You're ready, you're ready. Jesus is saying, hey, give me the bags. Give me the bags. You don't need to carry it anymore. You don't need to carry it anymore. You don't need to carry it anymore. In the name of Jesus, you don't have to carry it anymore. Oh, no. Hey, Jesus, freedom right now for my sister. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. Freedom right now. Yeah, yeah. Forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself. Oh, forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for this family. Oh, God, do it right now. I pray for this family. I pray for this family right now. I pray for this family right now. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead and cry. It's okay. Do it right now, Jesus. Father, every need, every need, every need. It's okay, honey. It's okay. God is wanting to pick up the baggage right now. It's okay. You're going to make it through this. It's tough. It's a tough life. It's a tough season of life. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to make it. You're going to get through this. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, in the name of Jesus, it's all right. Father, do it right now. Do it right now. Break through right now. Don't carry it any longer. I said, don't carry it any longer. Hey, Linda, Linda, pray for her. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Oh, do it right now. Something good. Something good's gonna come out of this. For my brother right now. Deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Let every bag be emptied right now. The weight, let it be gone. The struggle, let it be gone. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, we thank you. God, I pray for my mom right now. Father, whatever the bags that she's carrying, I pray right now that this is the last day she carries them. In the name of Jesus, set her free, God. Strengthen her right now, God. In the name of Jesus, do it, God, in her life. Do it right now, God. Do it right now, God. Lift the load right now, God. Lift the load right now. Lift the load right now. In the name of Jesus, lift the load right now. Lift the load right now. It's okay. Lift the load right now, God. Lift it now. Father, for my brother, I pray right now that you're lifting the load. In the name of Jesus, lift the load right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, God. It's so heavy, God. It's so heavy, God. It's so heavy, God. It's so heavy, God. Oh, God, let joy come. Let joy come. Let it come like a flood. Let it not even be gradual, but let it be immediate right now. Father, I thank you, Father, for it in the name of Jesus. Healing right now. For Jeremiah, I declare healing right now in his body. Touch these eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Touch these eyes right now in the name of Jesus. We declare one and done. Listen, we've declared one and done. 
one surgery if necessary no more in the name of jesus i thank you that he will testify he will testify in this church about god's healing power in the name of jesus for kathleen god do it in our life do it in our life do it in our life oh god in the name of jesus it doesn't matter anymore hey father do it right now release right now freedom 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 right now oh in the name of jesus father right now i thank you for freedom for my sister it doesn't matter anymore in the name of jesus i declare freedom oh god she's been carrying it she's been carrying it it's been so heavy god but i thank you i thank you that the load is lighter for this day forward in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus uh, father we thank you in the name of jesus uh, Oh, Father, for my brother, oh, I love your tender heart, man. Father, I thank you that you're doing it. I thank you right now that you're touching and you're strengthening right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever the load is, I know that you're able to touch it. And I pray for a freedom. I pray for a confidence. I pray for a, a certainty to just to rise up right now in my sister right now. Do it in her life. Do it in her life. Do it in his life. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. Oh. One and done right now for Christina. In the name of Jesus, son. Every battle, all the ways. I thank you for confidence that's coming right now. I thank you for confidence that's coming right now. In the name of Jesus, son. Father, I thank you for confidence that's coming right now. Supernatural confidence to come right now. Father, I declare it right now for her. I pray for clear direction. Clear direction. Clear direction. Clear direction. Clear direction. Clear direction. Charity. Clear. I'm going to have Charity pray with you, Christina. If you're okay with that. I want you to pray for Christina. Just be led. Father, for Lisa, my friend, I pray right now that the baggage that she's been carrying for, for years... Father, I thank you that it's going to be left at this altar. She's going to leave this place bag free in the name of Jesus. I thank you for strength. I thank you for direction. I thank you right now that you're healing some wounds. And God, that you're making some things right in our spirit. You're making some things settled in our heart. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus for Israel. I thank you right now that it doesn't matter anymore. I thank you for breakthrough. I thank you right now for healing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Oh, yeah. Just lift up your hands right where you're at and just begin to say thank you. Thank you, God. I want you to see in the spirit, this is what your life is going to look like when you leave here. Just 
old bag scattered around, kicked over because it doesn't matter anymore. If you could just see yourself free, because you got to see yourself free before you can walk out your freedom. So you need to make up your mind that all of the stuff that I've been carrying, that I carried into this place, it's you, you just have to see with faith eyes and spirit eyes that it's just all at the altar. Just, just imagine just the pile of bags all in this altar. And you've got to allow yourself to walk in the freedom that God has for you. How many people are thankful? Thanks for lingering a little bit long today. Stand to your feet. I want to pray over you as Tanya comes. Father, I thank you that if anybody is dealing with some stuff, maybe those that didn't walk down or didn't feel comfortable, that's all right. It, it, the power is in your spirit. It's not at a location in a building. So I thank you right now that you're touching those that are maybe still dealing with some stuff. I pray that this is day one of a bag-free, baggage-free life for your people today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, if you're thankful for victory, clap your hands and give it up for Jesus.